4,000? Oh, this is 4,000. Mm -hmm. That's funny. It said 40,000 in the other verse, right? Yeah, yeah. So why is there a contradiction in the Word of God? I don't see a contradiction. 4,000, 40,000 the same so to you? So if you have 40, you also have 4. Oh. <laughs> what the hell is this? Audhu Billah. Is the Bible a reliable book? If we find contradictions between the text of the Bible, do we still consider it as the Word of God? That's what today's video is all about. Go ahead. No, 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 but no, you know, like, so you're missing out. Salvation doesn't come through. How are you doing? You don't get saved through prayer. You get saved through Christ. Where did you get that from? Scripture. Can I, can I, can I ask you about Scripture then? Mm -hmm. So this is the Scripture, right? Mm -hmm. Holy Bible, King James Version. Yeah. All right. So. Because you're you're using that as as the demarcation of right and wrong, I no, just want to right and wrong, truth and untruth. Truth and untruth. Truth Got and it. Untruth. Christians believe that you are saved by faith and not work, following Paul and not the prophets of God. Paul said in Ephesians, "For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves; it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast." What Paul meant in this verse. For Christians to be saved, they only need to believe that Jesus died for their sins and no works are required. And that's why Christianity is a pagan religion, because it promotes human and blood sacrifice. But Paul contradicted prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament. If we read Ezekiel 18 verse 20, the one who sins is the one who will die. The child will not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. The righteousness of the righteous will be credited to them and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against them. This verse in Ezekiel is a clear refutation of the concept of the original sin, meaning there is no need for Jesus Christ to die for our sins, because Ezekiel clearly promotes self-accountability and that sins are not inherited. From where did the Christians came up with the original sins doctrine? If we read Ezekiel 18 verse 21, But if a wicked person turns away from all the sins they have committed, and keeps all my decrees, and does what is just and right. That person will surely live, they will not die. You can clearly see how Ezekiel contradicts Paul and Christianity. According to the Old Testament, to be saved you need to keep the commandments, and not just some of them, because the verse says all of them. And to be forgiven, you just need to repent to God. Some Christians will come back to me and say, that man is a sinner. You need to make a choice. Either you believe prophet Ezekiel, or Paul, a man that is not a prophet and never met Jesus in his life. Your choice to make. If we continue reading Ezekiel 18 verse 22, none of the offenses they have committed will be remembered against them. Because of the righteous things they have done, they will live. This verse is ignored by Christians completely and they make God as if he is a great God of anger and war and they ignore the mercy and wisdom of God. God forgives his sincere servants. No need for mediators between you and God. You turn to him directly and ask for forgiveness and keep the commandments and God willing you'll be saved. And again some Christians will quote another verse contradicting Ezekiel and prove to everybody that the Bible is corrupted and contradict itself. So this is 1 Kings, mm -hmm. right? Chapter 4, verse 26, right? Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses mm -hmm. for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. How many stalls of horses? 40,000. 40,000, all right, excellent. So here in 2 Chronicles, chapter 9, verse 25, Solomon had 40,000. Mm -hmm. 4,000? Oh, this is 4,000. Mm -hmm. That's funny. It said 40,000 in the other verse, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's read the verses together. First King 4 verse 26. And Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. But if we read Second Chronicles 9 verse 25, And Solomon had 4,000 stalls of horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen, whom he bestowed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. If you are a Christian and you feel embarrassed, let me help. This is how you answer this contradiction. If a Muslim like me comes up to you with this contradiction, this clear-cut contradiction, you need to accept that the King James Version of the Bible isn't inspired by God and say that you don't believe in it. And you pick up for example the New International Version of the Bible and you read 1 King 4 verse 26 Solomon had 4,000 stalls for chariot horses and 12,000 horses. And if you read 2 Chronicles 9 verse 25, Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots and 12,000 horses, which he kept in the chariot cities and also with him in Jerusalem. See how fair I am? Because the King James Version of the Bible is based on earlier manuscripts and is full of scribal errors 
additions and clear lies. For example, the story of the adulterous woman. It is a lie and doesn't exist in the earliest manuscripts. Or 1 John 5 7. In the King James Version it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. But if you pick up a Bible that is based on earlier manuscripts like the NIV, it says, For there are three that testify. The Trinity verse is removed as a fabrication and doesn't exist in the earlier manuscripts like the Codex Sinaiticus. So why is there a contradiction in the Word of God? I don't see a contradiction. 4,000, 40,000 the same so to you? you have 40, you also have 4. Oh. <laughs> I do apologize, I take back my previous answer. This is the best answer for the KJV contradictions. But on a serious note, how can you trust a book that keeps changing from century to century after finding an anonymous manuscript in a cave somewhere? How can you trust a manuscript that you just find out and don't know who wrote it and translate it to different languages and claim it's from God? God but, raised but, Christ but, Jesus from the dead. Okay. And he was ascended up into heaven. God he raised himself? No, Jesus is the son of God. See, so he's not God. Jesus is the son. No, Jesus he's is not God. the son of God. Okay, but he's not God himself. God. Christians in this video will label this Christian a heretic because he claimed Jesus is not God. But the reality is that majority of Christians have no clue what the Trinity is. When speaking to Christians in public, you'll understand that they don't believe that Jesus and the Father are equal and yet they will still pray to Jesus or they believe that Jesus is the Messiah and not God and that the Father is the only true God but they don't call themselves Unitarians you'll find them still believing in the Trinity while at the same time not believing in the Trinity confusing I know but this is Christianity for you no two Christians will ever agree on the doctrine of the Trinity because it's a mystery and not logical you don't want to answer the Old Testament? Hmm? We'll go to the New, the New Testament. Testament. Okay, so who is the father of Jesus on earth? Like, who was his supposed father? father Joseph, uh, right? Supposedly Joseph. Yeah. That's what it says. So Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, who was born Jesus. So Jesus was born to Mary, and the father Mary. was Joseph here, right? Mm -hmm. but and know, who's but you who's know the, who's but the you know, Joseph's you know father? How, you know how he's born. Who's Joseph's father? You know how he's born. Who's Joseph's father? Jacob. Uh, Let's move on now to the New Testament. The writer of the Gospels Matthew and Luke have the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And Sheikh Hetman just quoted from the Gospel of Matthew. If we read Matthew 1 verse 16, And Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus who is called the Messiah. So according to Matthew, Jacob is the father of Joseph. But it will contradict with the Gospel of Luke. If we read Luke 3 verse 23, now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, so it was taught, of Joseph, the son of Heli. So was Joseph the son of Jacob or the son of Heli? I'm sorry Christians, this time I have no answer for you. I tried to help you with the KJV and Old Testament contradictions. But this one, there is no answer for it. Okay, so here... Jesus was the son of Joseph, the son of Heli. Mm -hmm. So is Heli the father of Joseph or Jacob? No, see where you're or he has two dads. No, no, no. This is a clear-cut contradiction. Therefore, can't be from God and can't be considered as a scripture. Imagine believing God the Almighty made a mistake and contradicted himself. I invite the Christians to pick up the Quran and read it for themselves and read about Jesus in Islam and all the prophets peace be upon them all and learn how the prophets in Islam are the best creation of God and respected human beings with good morals and convictions. Not like Christianity and the Bible that depicts the prophets as fornicators and baby killers. Imagine believing that prophet Lot peace be upon him was drunk and had sex with his two daughters. Not once, but two consecutive nights. May Allah protect us from such slander. And I ask Allah to punish those that insult the honor of Prophet Lot, peace be upon him, and all the prophets. You can check this video. A famous Christian apologist in Speaker's Corner will admit that the Bible is not preserved. And consider subscribing if you like content like this. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.